Hi everybody, Physics Ninja here. Today what I want to do is I want to show you how you can calculate the moment of inertia and I'm going to consider a one-dimensional beam. Uh, this beam here is going to have a mass M. Let me just draw this. It's going to have a total length L. So that's the length of this beam. And we're going to do a few different things. Okay, I'm going to show you how you set up the integral to calculate the moment of inertia. So the textbook definition is the integral of r squared dm. So we're going to define all of these terms and I'll show you how you evaluate it for this beam. Now whenever you calculate moment of inertia, you have to define an axis about which you're calculating that moment of inertia. So I'm going to first consider the axis that goes through the center of mass of the object. That will be right in the middle of that object. That will be the first case I'm going to consider. All right? So axis number one. I'm also going to show you two ways to calculate the moment of inertia about a different axis. And I can place it anywhere. I'm going to first consider an axis placed at the edge. I'll call this problem number two that I'm going to do today. So how would you set up the integral? All right, that's one way of calculating the moment of inertia. And the other way, which is simpler, is something called uh, using the parallel axis theorem. Okay, and I'll show you how you can evaluate that. And then we'll place another axis anywhere along this object and show you how you can use the parallel axis theorem to not always having to set up this integral, which sometimes can be complicated. All right. Like with all my videos, give it a thumbs up if you like it. Consider subscribing to my channel. All right, let's get started. All right, let's consider uh, case one over here. Uh, case one, I have my axis going through the center of mass, right? The center of mass is right here because I have a uniform beam. Uh, let's define a couple things. Here is equation one. This is what I want to set up for this problem. The total mass of the beam is m. Um, it also means that this is a uniform beam. So the density I can write out as the mass divided by the length. It's basically a one dimensional object. Now you can also write that as dm over, um, well, what is going to be this small little distance over here? We're going to call that has a length dr. Okay, so this mass of the infinitesimal uh, little bit over here is going to be dm. All right, so these are just definitions. Next thing I want to do is I want to start substituting everything inside this equation one. And since my axis goes through the center of mass, I'm going to call it I through the center of mass. All right, it's going to be equal. Now, it's integral of R squared. I don't do anything with that term. The next thing I want to do is I want to get rid of this dm. And I can do that using this density definition. So the dm, I can replace it by the density multiplied by that little bit of distance dr. All right, what I'm going to do now is take the constant. A density is a constant term. You can take it out of the integral. And I'm left with r squared dr. So I'm integrating over r. Well, let's think about uh, how, what are the limits of this distance, right? I'm integrating all the way from this side all the way to that side, right? And if the center here is position zero, that means this guy is at minus L over two. This guy here is at a position of plus L over two. So let's go ahead and put those limits in here. These are the limits of integration for uh, the variable R, that length variable. So this is a pretty straightforward integral. So let's just go ahead and evaluate it. So you get the density and this simply becomes R cube over three. Right, this gets multiplied, and now I have to evaluate that between minus L over 2 all the way to plus L over 2. All right, so the last bit is just to clean up uh, this calculation. Uh, the density I'll leave the way it is, and now we have to substitute our limits. I could take the 1 third, uh, take that 3 to the outside, uh, since it's a constant term, and now I'm left with a bracket, and let's substitute the limits. So we get L over 2, uh, that's cubed. And then minus, then you have to substitute the lower limit down here. This will be minus L over 2. And that is also cubed. So you have to be a little bit careful here, right? Because I have quite a few negative signs. So I've got the density over 3. Uh, this first term here is going to become L cubed. And I have to cube the factor of 2. That becomes 8. And then minus. Now again, I have to cube negative L. Well, guess what? That also introduces another negative. So I'm just going to call that the positive. Both of those negative signs are going to cancel out and everything remains the same. All right, so I have two factors that are the exact same. Uh, so you can combine those. So you get two 
the density, the length cube, and then divided by 3 times 8. Now, 3 times 8 gives me 24. All right, we're going to take this one last step. Uh, first thing you could factor out is a factor of 2. Get rid of this. That becomes 12 in the denominator. And now the last bit, uh, we can also replace the density, right? Because remember that density is equal to the mass divided by the length. It's kind of useful to always have it in terms of the mass and the length for the moment of inertia. So the last bit of calculation I'm going to do here, um, let's just write moment of inertia through that center axis. Uh, that numerical factor is 1 12th. The density gets replaced by mass over the length. And I still have a length cube from that integration. So look what happens here. One of those L factors cancels out. And the last equation now that we get that the moment of inertia through the center of mass is pretty straightforward. 1 12th ML squared is my final answer. Let me go ahead and box that one up. All right, so that is the first calculation I wanted to do. Let's go now to a different case. What if I move my rotation axis uh, all the way to the edge of the beam? Let's go see how we set up the integral in that case. All right, here's case number two. Again, same beam. The only thing I'm going to do is I'm going to move the axis all the way to the edge of the object. So I haven't changed much. I haven't changed the mass. I haven't changed the density. I'm not going to change this integral, right? The only thing that is going to change is how I'm going to set it up. Because now if you think about it, how far are these little masses away from the axis, right? They can be a lot farther, especially if I consider the little mass down at the edge over here, right? It is a total distance L away from the axis of rotation. So the limits of integration change. In this case, I'm integrating all the masses from zero all the way to the length of the beam. Everything else becomes the exact same. So I'm going to follow the same procedure. I still take the density out. I'm going from 0 to L of R squared dr. This, again, is a straightforward integral. It's the same as what I did before, the density. Now this becomes, again, R cubed over 3. And I'm evaluating that between the limits. Actually, substituting the limits is also easier for this case. Uh, at the end, you're simply left with the density. This becomes L cubed divided by 3. Uh, when you substitute the 0, you get minus 0. So I'm not even going to include that term. Now we're going to take this one step further. Again, we could eliminate the density by substituting the mass over the length. And we still have uh, the rest of the terms, L cubed divided by 3. Um, cancel out one of the lengths. All right, so our new moment of inertia, again, it's about this axis number 2, is quite different, right? It's M. L squared, that is the same, except now instead of dividing by uh, 12, we're only dividing by 3, right? You notice that this moment of inertia is bigger than the previous one I had, right? This was the moment of inertia from the first case through the axis that goes through the center of mass. Uh, this case here was 1 12th ML squared. Actually, that's kind of a general property of moment of inertia. And the reason that it's bigger is because now you have mass that is much farther away from the axis of rotation. And that contributes more because of this R squared dependence. Okay, so whenever you have the, mo um, the moment of inertia through the center of mass, if you calculate about any other axis, it's always going to be bigger than that value through the center of mass. All right, I want to now look at something called the parallel axis theorem. And let's solve this problem using that theorem. Let's first review it, then apply it to two different cases. All right, I now want to solve the same problem, except now I'm going to use something called the parallel axis theorem. The parallel axis theorem stated right here. It basically says that the moment of inertia, okay, through any axis that is parallel to the axis that goes through the center of mass. So for example, axis two is parallel to the axis that goes through the center of mass. I could evaluate the moment of inertia through that axis. If I know the value through the center of mass, all I have to do is add this additional factor. This additional factor is the mass of the entire object. In this case, it's the mass of the beam, that's m, and multiplied by h squared, and h is simply the distance now between both axes. So in this case here, this would be my value h. And for this particular problem, it would simply be half the length of the beam. So let's go ahead and apply this equation. Now we've already done the integral, but it doesn't matter. The moment of inertia through the center of mass is 1 12th 
ml squared plus uh, the mass. And now we substitute this factor of h. Uh, this is l over 2. And don't forget, you have to square that term. And now all you have to do is carry out the algebra and just be a little bit careful. So plus m. OK, this uh, parentheses is squared, so it becomes l squared over 4. All right, you have to put things on a common denominator. Anyway, I'm going to kind of carry this out. Uh, 1 12th. Uh, what else? ML squared plus, if I put this on a factor of 12 on a common denominator, let's just write the ML squared. Uh, this would become 3 twelfths. At the end, if you add those, you get 4 over 12. And guess what? 4 over 12 is the same thing as 1 third ML squared. I get the exact same result that I previously had when I set up this integral from equation one with the appropriate limits. Now, why would you care about this? Well, now it's a lot easier because if you actually look in your textbook, your textbook usually has a table of the moment of inertia of a lot of various objects, for example, spheres, rings, shells, and it usually only lists the value through the center of mass. But the nice thing about it is if you have any axis now, that is parallel to the center of mass, you can easily calculate the moment of inertia through that new axis. So let's do one last example just to practice this. All right, so let's, this is a typical table from a textbook that publishes a lot of moment of inertia of different objects, typically through the center of mass of the object. Um, let's consider maybe just the sphere case, okay? So the moment of an inertia of the sphere through the center of mass is two-fifths mr squared. Let me just go ahead and write that. And r, in this case, is the radius of that sphere. Now, what if I said, well, let's calculate the moment of inertia of the sphere through an axis that goes along the edge, okay? That is right at the edge. So that would make it a distance r away from the previous through the axis, uh, through the center of mass axis. So how would I calculate the moment of inertia through this red axis? Well, again, I would simply apply the parallel axis theorem, which says the moment of inertia through the center of mass plus the mass of the object. And now that factor h is simply becomes r squared. Now we simply have to substitute the value for the moment of inertia through the center of mass, 2 fifths mr squared for a solid sphere, plus mr squared. That's it, right? Now you just have to group the terms together. Get rid of that little c here. I don't know why that's there. Um, so what do we have? 2 fifths, uh, this is basically 5 fifths. So we get 7 fifths mr squared is the moment of inertia through this red axis, right? Pretty straightforward. If you were going to set up the integral to calculate this, many would take you a long time for the sphere. Uh, for the beam or the one-dimensional uh, bar, it wasn't so bad to set up. Uh, but for a sphere like this, it would be much more complicated. It's way more straightforward to apply this equation uh, from the parallel axis theorem. All right, that's it for me, folks. Thanks for watching.